Hi, and welcome to the Flute Talk Podcast, where we talk about all things flute, live here on Patreon. What is Patreon? Patreon is a place for fans like you to come and support creators like us. For as little as $2 a month, you can join in on this live show once a month. Plus, we'll send you the popular 5-minute warm-up for Flutus in a Hurry as a gift for being so awesome. Plus, we'll give a shout-out to all of our patrons in our podcast. This plus many more perks and tiers await you. So why not join us over on Patreon and help us continue to make great content? The Flute Talk Podcast is also brought to you by the Flute Center of New York. The Flute Center of New York has the world's largest selection of flutes. If you need to buy a flute or piccolo, the Flute Center of New York has you covered. With our code TFC at checkout, you can try up to three to four flutes for up to 10 days, have an extended 18-month warranty, and free shipping worldwide. So be sure to go to the website flutes4sale.com. So that's flutes the number four sale.com flutes for sale.com just be sure to use that code tfc for all those perks and a little bit of that does go our way another sponsor as well ourselves we have a store if you haven't noticed yet we have a store over at store.theflutechannel.com we have some shirts and posters and things like that over at teespring so you can definitely go there and get some merch posters whatever you like that we have it will be there you probably noticed it under our videos if you're interested be sure to go to store.theflutechannel.com that helps us out immensely so yeah on with the show hey everybody welcome to the flute talk podcast i'm nick and i'm emily how's it going emily good how are you good so this is the podcast uh only here on patreon um where we're going to answer uh, questions from our patrons on Patreon. We do this once a month. You can definitely uh, find us there on patreon.com slash the flute channel. You can help us be a producer and uh, make all these great content for a little $2 a month. And today we're going to talk about uh, how to be healthy as a musician or healthy aspects. So that we'll talk about that at the end of the show. But right now we're going to talk about uh, your questions. And we have two good, really good questions uh, uh, this week. And we answer questions about anything. It doesn't have to be particularly to the topic of our podcast, which is really great. So it opens a discussion uh, a lot, which is great. And this one kind of fits really well. That's kind of the one I wanted to talk about the most was uh, by Sigurd, which is about music camps. Because summer music camps, that's coming up around yeah, the corner. It's and time to uh, think about that. Think about that. And a lot of people have never thought about that. So, yeah, I'll just get to uh, Sigurd's uh, question. He says, uh, I want to ask about your opinion on those summer music camps. Uh, do they have better educational value compared to taking lessons normally and practice regularly? What can you expect from a camp and what is the main learning objective? Also, given that a lot of those camps are intensive, we are looking at four hour morning sessions, four hour afternoon sessions, and maybe even an evening recital. On top of that, uh, you need time to practice for a week or maybe two. Will it be too physically or mentally exhausting? I should also mention that the main part I find puzzling is normally we talk about practice regularly, take rests and let the concepts sink in. Uh, study of music or the instrument seems to be like a long game and cannot be rushed. When I saw those intensive summer programs and how popular they are, I feel this is a direct contradiction on what I was told about learning music. A uh, very, very good question. Very smart. It's probably one of the best yeah. questions I've heard in the whole year. Very cool. Very good question. Good to talk about, for sure. Let's okay. tackle. Let's tackle from the beginning. I think, okay, right? So no? He asks if if it's better to do camps or lessons. Yeah, I guess that's a, I guess that's the core. I guess that's the core of it. Or yeah. whatever, however you want. It's to the do educational it. value. Is it compare? Yeah. Okay. I think they have different goals. You're not gonna be able to. Um, learn that much in two weeks because of course your brain can like if you don't know any scales you're not going to know all your scales or uh, you know you're not going to be virtuoso you need to practice a lot for mm. a long period to become a virtuoso but um so you you still need the regular thing and mm. uh, having a teacher is a very good thing especially if you have someone who's organized and can organize your practice and um also his building your technique and your understanding of music, you know, one stone at a time, mm. like using what you already know and adding on so that you understand the next concept. So you have all the prerequisites 
to understand the next concept. Mm -hmm. um, that happens if you have someone who who uh, knows you and gives you, you know, a certain type of um, follow up. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing. I for me the um, the festivals it's it's you go there and you get all that information and then you digest it throughout the year. Plus, I've been to different types of festivals. So I've been to festivals that are super intense where you don't even have time to practice. And sometimes, some places, you don't even have a good place to practice. Mm -hmm. I've been to festivals where my only place to practice was a little hut, super warm, full of bugs in there, and <laughs> you get bitten while you're practicing. So... I thought to myself, I'm not going to practice much while I'm here, but I'm going to get what I can, take notes, a lot of notes, and then go back home and reread that and spend the year, you know, um, letting that sink in. And I've been to other festivals where we, we had a little bit less courses. I, one place we had three hours a day of courses, and the rest of the day we would practice, do chamber music, and in the evening there was a concert, and that was it. Personally, I improved more there because mm -hmm. I had time to, that, and it was one teacher. So he would give me something to do and then I would go and practice that and then come back. And so it was like doing, it was like doing, um, I don't know, a, a few months in two weeks because mm -hmm. we still had retroaction. Some festivals are really about, you don't get that much retroaction. Sometimes you play for the master like the person who does a master class once so you won't get if he if the person tells you oh um work on this then you're not going to play again to check if the way you worked on it was effective or mm -hmm. not so it all depends they have mm -hmm. there's different festivals and it depends what you want from it do you want something very intensive and then you take that and you go back home and you or do you want to work while you're there have a little bit more time have one teacher or have multiple so you get mm -hmm. even more information mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. there's different yeah but i think there's more festivals that are with a lot of different teachers and that are very intense that you don't really have that much time to practice there's more of that mm -hmm. i think they have a value because yeah. it's cool also to hear different people explaining the same thing you might understand it better in one with one person than with another What's your opinion? Uh, I can't really add much to it, really. Uh, I think you kind of nailed it a bit. Uh, I always find those things now more than more as I've gone through life is that uh, they're sort of like conventions. You know, when you go to other types of when you go to big conventions to learn something um, with speakers and talkers, it's very overwhelming after three or four days or even after the first day. You get a lot of data that you're very, very concentrated data that you're very interested in you know and it's because you're in that environment it has a much bigger effect than if you were reading an article or watching a video and that's really it like it's 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 a lot of it is overwhelming for a lot of people even if you don't if you go in there just to learn and not to actually necessarily practice if you don't want to just to kind of like if you have your own goals it's a uh, but it will be overwhelming no matter what most people that i've been with it overwhelming in a good way because you're just registering a lot of data in that you're going to have to apply later. Don't apply that at that moment. Continue to absorb as much as you can. Yeah. That's all I could say, I really. think a good thing to do is to take notes. Yes. And what I used to... And record to... them if you can, if yeah. you're allowed. Well, what I used to do that for what was efficient for myself was to take notes during the day. And then at the end of the day, take like 15 minutes to reread my notes and mm -hmm. transcribe what was really the mm -hmm. giveaway of that day because mm -hmm. if you don't go back to to that information and reorganize it somehow you will lose a lot of it yeah and then at the end you you get more from it and then you have the whole year to yeah use that knowledge yeah. that you acquired yeah. in your daily practice yeah. because and especially one thing i remember is that because you're there it's it you have the impression that you have to apply those things immediately don't think that. It's really, like you just said, it's something to apply later on in the year. Or you now, know what I mean? but it takes 
it's it a takes process. time. That's what I mean. It's a process. It's not yeah. because you start working on something and it doesn't work immediately that it's not working. It's, no, exactly. It's a process. Yes, You're exactly. in the process of exactly. getting there. Yeah, you know? maybe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and also yeah. a thing you made me think of is that When you go to those festivals, there's a lot of different flutists and you're going to listen to different repertoire, different sounds, yeah. different, you know. Yeah. And also, if you want to teach eventually, it's a good thing because you can listen to uh, the person and ask yourself, oh, what would I tell the student? Yeah. And then you can compare with what the mm. teacher is saying yes. and add to your repertoire as a teacher as well. Yeah, you know? I think that rolls back to his next question, which is what can you expect from a camp and what is the main learning objective? Like you just said, one of one objective could be to get tools to be a better teacher. You know, have a couple objectives before you want to go there. Like research about it, see if that's really what you want the camp or summer session you want to do. And maybe we make two or three objectives. You will definitely have more objectives while you're there to pursue because there'll be more things to yeah but, but if you know what some, you want you'll yeah. have also a better idea of uh where yeah. to go or yeah. what to get exactly because um you might want to do orchestra there's some yes. that have orchestras some yes. don't yeah. you might want to do chamber music you want you might want to do more like a practice retreat that yep. exists that, as well exists. yeah that is just mainly just go and practice and Book and lessons with teachers with, if you want. With yeah. other musicians. Yep, and, the social aspect. And usually you, you do have lessons as yeah. well, but you you have a lot of time to yes. just practice and yes. think about that. You're not in the the life, uh, Yes. you know? Yeah. You're outside a little bit, yeah. so you, it's like more a retreat. So there's yeah. different things. Yeah, and there's a social aspect. That's one thing also to kind of expect. There's also a social aspect, you know, downtime, up time like practicing time and you'll have people there that are like you but then you also have people that are less or more intense and um you know because they're all coming in from very different avenues not necessarily they're playing it's just their their attitude towards music can be uh very interesting i think it's very introspective uh, retro introspective like like interesting i guess interesting interesting to 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 see how many people are very passionate about music and the degrees and you and, can make friends and you make I friends, made friends and stuff in like those that places so and, yeah um but yeah the whole four hour morning session four hour afternoon session it is a lot uh, to to deal with a lot of those places do follow that format it's true but um, some don't some don't and also some people go there with that particularly the way he said it there Uh, they're not necessarily being participants. It could be auditors. I remember seeing a lot over what, uh, at least half in my experience, that are just sitting there watching these classes, these lectures. Well, usually you don't participate for eight hours. That's not possible. Not participating usually, for eight hours, but maybe play that one part of the class. Because I remember class, in you know, some like festivals. 20 minutes, half an hour. Yeah, because I, rem yeah. I remember in some festivals, I would be there the whole week, master class the whole afternoon and I would play once. Yeah, that's what I mean. So like you don't play a long for hours. you're a participant, hours. you're auditor most of the time. Yeah, well, no, absolutely. But I mean, like people do put a lot of stress on themselves when they are the participants, right? So they uh, do have a different focus mentality, yeah. I found. Yeah, um, and maybe we shouldn't because we almost learn more when we listen. Yeah, that's a whole different thing, right? Yeah, But exactly. But sometimes you can have, if you, sometimes you can be lucky and play and get a um, aha moment with a, with a teacher there. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen all the time, but aha moments happen. It aha sometimes. moments happen with the teacher, and also aha moments happen in the audience when you're watching. Like yeah. you say, it it happens as well too. Um, but I would say every day but also sometimes reserves it some... happens, and it wouldn't have happened if you were sitting there. Yes, sometimes you, the person needs to hear you yes. in order to be able. Oh, to but help that's you. right. But that's right. But it's both. And it's both because yeah. you don't perceive yourself the way people perceive yes. you. Yes, you're absolutely right. You can't. It's difficult to self-teach completely because there's things you're not going to notice about yourself that mm -hmm. someone from the outside is going to notice and then make you realize. Mm -hmm. I, I think if, if you don't realize it yourself, though, you're not learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I think uh, he says, like, will it be too physically or mentally exhausting? To a degree, I would say yes. But, like, again, those two, during those... It depends how much energy It depends how much you, you want to invest in and it depends exactly. But... Don't I wouldn't say get stressed about the that to get to that degree. I think try to reserve some downtime for yourself every every day there because again, um, like to review your notes maybe or maybe just to go for a walk or something something that makes that part of the brain 
you know, it's busy trying to document and and and, and yeah. categorize everything because it's so much data. Um, yeah, but in one way, also at one point, usually teachers start to be redundant a little bit. Everyone is, yes. you know. I've seen people <clears throat> in master class that. Let's say their thing is singing in the flute, and they'll say that to everyone, you know? So yeah. at one point, you kind of got it. Yeah, that takes a... You know? Yeah, that's true. So it's not... It's a lot of data, yes and no. And also, it's not high school. They're not taking attendance. If you need a break, you take a break. Yes, absolutely. That too. And that's a really good point. The way I see it is you get what you get from it. Yep. You can't remember everything. You mm -hmm. can't get everything, but... You get what you, yeah, you can, and totally. don't stress yourself because stress and learning are yeah. not really compatible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's yeah. still a very good experience yeah. for for me. It was very um, was a big part of my totally likewise my for me as well too. Uh, journey. Yeah, my first time, and I'm sure this is kind of like with what I think with the cigar is like it's just going to be his first time, or if if whatever you know. So it's like I remember for me it was like an addiction after I only went for one week. But I wanted to go for the second week, so I I, I signed up again to keep, to stay, mm -hmm. you know, and and so did several others because it was their first one ever. No one had a lot of those people never had done one before, and uh, it was sort of like a, a little addiction. You wanted more of it, and then after like another year and other places, same thing like that. Like you said, things do get redundant, and when that, things like that happen, I think especially in the, some of those festivals, they don't just have one instrument. Sometimes they have other instruments. I went to other master classes and listened to other instrumentalists, mm -hmm. and That's they have also a, very interesting. And the, oh yeah, and the perspective sometimes could be very different because they have a whole entire philosophy that could yeah. be different than than let's but say. But when I say teacher. redundant, I, I don't mean like from one teacher to another. Usually, you have different ways. Oh, but, I think you made it pretty clear. Even, yeah. even some teachers have a very personal way of going about things mm -hmm. for every different person, but some people I've noticed kind of have this. <laughs> One size fits all mm -hmm. uh, fix for things. And mm -hmm. like, it all depends on who you, like it depends on who's teaching as well. That's yeah. a big difference. Like yeah. it makes, but there is, yeah. It makes everything in, yeah. in reality. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then like, uh, last part of this thing was uh, kind of interesting, right? Was uh, we normally talk about practicing regularly and taking rest and let concepts sink in. That's sort of like how our, mentality is in our philosophy a lot of places i remember even at those types of camps that wasn't the case it's nothing there was not that type of thing like practice learn sink in it was just practice 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 and then no other data around for me so i think setting that as your own internal goals you know practice letting things sink in is very healthy and could make those types yeah, of experiences also, for yourself better if you don't have that much time to practice because you're just in the, just think about it as a mm -hmm. phase where you, you get a, you get a lot of things inside, and then you're gonna practice later and really mm -hmm. internalize them. You know, mm -hmm. it's but, a yeah. like just remembering it's a process. Yeah. We shouldn't uh, totally. stress too much about yeah. that. But I can see how he under uh, how he said at the end, like I feel like this is a direct contradiction. You know, yes, it, I know, because a lot of those places also have a morning um, uh, warm up, so you're gonna practice there and. Sometimes, if the teacher is very good, the teacher who does a warm up, you'll get a lot of of uh, knowledge about how to play better, and you're you're gonna use it every day. It all depends, you know. But I, I don't, think he's made it that think way, it's though. In contradiction. I, I don't think it's in contradiction because it it's. I don't think he means it that way, though. I think maybe it's sort of about you know like thinking about music for eight plus hours a day. You know the intenseness part of it and how. Should it be you leave and you? F I know a lot of people felt that way. Like, oh, I haven't invested enough time in music. I remember somebody saying on the train, like, eight hours a day. I gotta always think about music. I'm like, no, that's not how you should think about I it. Think you know, like, if you want to get to a certain level, at one point you kind of have to be obsessed. Yeah, but only for us. Uh, I think uh, on a certain allotted time frame. Yeah. That investment of intensity. I think sticks anyone who who becomes very good at something usually. They're a bit obsessive. Yeah. And um, it, it it's not agree, even yeah. for them. I don't think it's um, it's something that's a, a chore. It just be oh, it's no, so yeah. no, interesting no. to them that right. 
They're obsessed about it. Yeah. They always think about it. They listen yeah. to music. They're like, oh, what's that chord here? How many chords are there? Oh, they just, or, right. you know, yeah, yeah. They, they think about those yeah. things a lot. Like, And I think just um, swimming in, in that mm -hmm. water for yeah. a while, it's good because it, it makes you uh, one step. I, I always thought, like, it depends It depends on the on the festival I did. Some In festivals, person, yeah. I remember going back to my teacher after two weeks and he was like, wow, your sound changed so much. It's like you did a whole year of progress yeah. just like that in two weeks. I've had Some the, other yeah. festivals um, made me feel inadequate and it almost did the opposite. Mm -hmm. uh, because yeah. it, it uh, really um, hurt my self-esteem mm. and it made me f yeah feel inadequate and then I had to kind of rebuild. And now with the, with the, um, I still learned stuff. I learned oh, technical yes. things. And then I rebuilt. And I, I now with the, um, the distance, you mm -hmm. know, I can time, see yeah. with mm -hmm. time that it's also okay to have moments where your self-esteem is lower and to rebuild it. Because I think when you rebuild it, you build it stronger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you, you get tools and then, yeah. because you'll always have times in your life where you feel a bit more fragile. But if you have tools to, that you can use to counteract that, mm -hmm. then it's, it's not a bad thing at yeah. all. Yeah, I would because, agree. Because uh, difficulties are what makes us, difficulties that we can yeah. surmount are what makes us yeah. uh, more resilient yeah. in and the long yeah. run. And try so, it, yeah, exactly. But... I think it's a good thing to shop those things and find the one that really suits our needs. Yeah. Do a lot of research about them. See if there's any videos, like little clips about the festivals or and see if that's your fit or Maybe talk, see people. the teacher or ask people. Some of those places have Facebook groups as well, like alumni groups. And you can talk to those people there, I'm sure, and give little, ask little questions about that. And, and yeah. we're still all different, you know. Some of yeah, the festivals so that people really loved were not my favorite. Yeah. And... Vice yeah. versa, you know? Yeah. And I, I've seen, I'm, I'm pretty well researched about what's out there right now. And a lot of it tends to be on the intensive side. That's why it makes yeah. a lot of people very um, reluctant to go to them. So, again, do your research, ask around, see what it's like. Uh, those types of things can really help make your experience better. And that's yeah. pretty important. Uh, very good question. That's a topic that's like very, very interesting and it's a growing thing a growing yeah. thing because people are starting and it's a lot about things. the teacher so yes. if you if you can see the person online if there's a video if to see if you like their teaching yeah. style too because some teachers are super nice very yeah. respectful some people a bit less you know so or, yeah. it all depends what type of personality you like and it's a good thing yeah. if you can check that a bit before yeah. and if it's if more, you don't yeah. you're still good you're still gonna learn yep. we learn from everything totally there's a little saying it's um the the wise learns more from the idiot than the idiot from the wise. Mm. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. you can learn from any situation. Sure. So hopefully that helped, uh, Sigurd. Uh, if you have more uh, about that, want to talk more about that, definitely go back to the Patreon forum and ask more questions. We love that you're part of the team, part of the part of the Patreon uh, family, and uh, you always bring very great questions. And we have. Uh, yep. Another one by Justin Joe. I think he's a new supporter. And he wants to know uh, two things, I think. What is your favorite piece to play? And um, he says that he also hated playing music when uh, he was a child and only did because his parents made him. Now they would like. Now he would like to make his son learn how to play. Any tips on keeping them interested? Okay. Well, let's do the first thing was like favorite Our piece. Our favorite piece? No, not, well, yeah, your favorite piece, my favorite piece, yeah. I don't think don't I have a favorite, favorite, favorite piece. I like playing a particular composer, I guess, if that can kind of narrow it down further, and that's like Bach. I like playing Bach. Bach's pretty cool. And I like playing etudes. Etudes are way more fun than pieces sometimes. Yeah, Bach is on the breathing. It's something. Um, long phrases. I'm always out of air, but it's beautiful. But um, I don't know. There's a lot of good composers for the flute. I like, I like Handel. I think we don't play him enough. It's he. There's a lot of beautiful sonatas. Heard that by since him. I'm 13 years old. You know, I've heard mm -hmm. that. I've heard that. That it's underplayed. Yeah, I've heard like this 
been a it's a constant trend apparently <laughs> people guess. love people love not playing him <laughs> that people still say because i don't know we always say yeah. if it's baroque we always say back back but back there's a uh, all his sonatas are very oh, beautiful, I, yeah. but we should also play them. I play Handel, too. I play yeah. Handel sonatas all the time. Like, I love them. They're nice. They're very yeah. cute. But I don't... I love a lot of different pieces. I like uh, Mozart Concerto in G, and I like... Uh, I like the Prokofiev sonata. Mm -hmm. And... But what about the... The yeah. is super cool for flute. Mm -hmm. All the Doppler is cool for flute. Um, but, I don't know, yeah. right, just like that on the top of my head, but... But it's interesting. The last thing is, how do you keep the kids in? How do you keep your kids interested? Say you're a parent that not necessarily has musical training or does have musical training. Like, what would you do to keep them interested? Because we have we 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 have some, like a child, and <laughs> there's kids like they like you know. Well, there's yeah. a natural interest to begin with. Yes, that's a good point. Then there's also. Um, sometimes maybe you didn't want to play because your parents made you. Mm -hmm. Maybe you didn't play because they made you, but maybe you didn't want to play because they made you. Because sometimes when you put push too much, the kid pushes back. Right. You know? And I think it has to be some... Well, it all depends on your style of parenting. But I think with kids... Um, mm -hmm. Right now I'm reading a book about about attachment... And if it's a nice experience for the kid, and if you're a musician, if you play as well, maybe if, if you can share that together mm -hmm. and be interested in what they're playing and being positive about it so that mm -hmm. they feel happy when they play. And um, yeah, and also some kids are very autonomous, very early, very independent. They can practice alone. Some kids might need you to just sit there mm -hmm. because they... Maybe they don't even want you to tell them how to do it, but just they want you to be there. Right. So sometimes just because they're attached to you and you're there, they might practice more. Mm -hmm. And also we have to respect sometimes they're tired. Maybe sometimes of some periods they'll practice a bit less. And also uh, when I teach kids, I try to get repertoire that they like. Right. So make sure you have a teacher who does that. Because, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I usually take out a lot, even with adults, with everyone. I take a lot of pieces out. I play them for the ki for the students, and then right. what what's uh, sparking some interest in mm -hmm. you? You know, what do you want to play? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's like interest. It like the kid's interest first, and also the attachment to the teacher or to the parents, so that he wants to please you or he wants to be with you or it's a special moment together because mm -hmm. you're playing together or he feels uh, valued or right yeah it definitely sounds like he the, the parent hated music but now has this love and in, in, in pursuit to be able to make their children love it you know from his hate he wants to bring a new love to some to passing it down so he doesn't have hate towards it so i guess it's like it's very interesting in that regard that uh i think making them play music that they want to play they don't necessarily have to play classical music pieces they yeah. like playing pop uh bohemian uh you know music <laughs> or whatever you yeah. know like all those types of uh, tunes and stuff that's great like because uh, sometimes yeah. when we teach we forget that the point is for them to play yeah so let's say a kid reads <clears throat> a bit less he reads a bit less but he's still learning uh the technique of his yes. instrument he's still learning the fingerings he's still so mm -hmm. you know instead of seeing what he, the kid is not doing maybe we can see that they're still learning something from yeah. it and other things will come later maybe yes. you know yeah. and we shouldn't um focus too much on that we should try to focus on how can i make this kid want to play longer yeah i think just, we yeah. maybe have to because there's been studies that a lot of kids who play music in their childhood as adults, they don't play at all anymore. And I think it's so sad. Yeah, I think, I think that's interesting. I think just giving them the ability to have, to have a, uh, uh, a pleasure towards music, not necessarily the length of time playing it, but just being able to process music, play a little bit, but just love music when they actually play instead of just like playing for hours or playing for someone yeah. else. That way, like we've got a lot of people on the, on, on the, on the channel saying that they've, taken 10 20 years off 
and then come back to yeah. it. So I feel like they do. Because there was a pleasure somewhere. Yeah, there was. Maybe they didn't have time for a period of time, but yeah. now they And it settled uh, back down back. again. Like I think I think we kind of stir the the air so much that that love is so spread that we can't. And then after years, it, it kind of just falls back down. Like oh, there it is. Now I can go back into it. Even shorter terms too. Like it's. Uh, but but it's yeah. very interesting in that way. I think. I think we we tend to to think that kids are different than adults in a lot of ways and they are but in some ways they are very similar mm -hmm. we don't like to be bossed around and mm. we all like to feel free so sure. sometimes there's little strategies to make kids feel free even if you're you're uh, putting boundaries but like sitting down with your kid and being like I think uh, you want to play that piece if you want to play that piece you'll have to practice this mm -hmm. many times a week, let's look at your schedule and let's pick times, set times aside for that. Mm -hmm. And you pick the time with the kid, then, you know, he feels or she feels more in control of the situation and then more motivated in return. Right. Because motivation is linked to a feeling of freedom and a feeling of, um, of uh, competency. Right. Mm -hmm. well, that's what research says about yeah. motivation. Yeah. Feeling free and feeling competent are the two things that keep people motivated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how Super can you help your exactly. kid in that? Uh... Yeah. So hopefully that answers your question, Justin. Like I said, you can definitely uh, follow us up on that on the forum, on the Patreon, and to talk about it or in the comments too down below. Um, like I said, we do this live. So we're just going to do a little pause on the segment, and then we're going to talk about a little bit about health and healthiness, how to be healthy as a musician, and then we'll close off the show. But uh, we're going to do one new segment, which is like we're going to read our uh, iTunes reviews. So we have oh. one iTunes review, so uh, you can leave an iTunes review. If we pick one of yours, uh, when we say it out loud, we're going to try to get in touch with you, or if we said it, say in the comments down below, oh, it's mine, and we'll confirm that it is you and stuff, and then we'll send you a little care package of some some little tiny flute stuff. So go on iTunes, find the Flute Talk podcast, leave a review. It definitely helps us get up there in the whole classical music, podcasting, educational uh, world because a lot of people love the way uh, we kind of do this. And I think uh, we should be seen more. And uh, as a gift to you, that's what we're going to do. So um, we have one here by Ace of Spade 26. So uh, five stars out of five. Uh, it's a gem is the title. And... Uh, Super informative. Anyone who's a musician should check out this podcast. Pretty nice little That's short and sweet very comment. Nice. You can make a long one. You can make a funny one. You can do whatever. But as long as you rate it, that'd be great. So go on iTunes and go and review it. Leave leave a review, and we'll definitely read those. And we do that once a month. And that's gonna be a little new segment. So if that was you, be sure to get in touch with us, and we'll figure out something there. But the, we're going to just talk a little bit shortly about the the topic of the of this week's this yeah. month's podcast is basically like a, how to be a healthy musician. Like, what's one thing that you've recently learned about that's that you've been able to apply to your general practice? Well, I've been talking about Pilates a lot. <laughs> oh, Pilates, right? I didn't yeah. expect you to say that, but that's great. That's awesome. Yeah, Pilates is a very good one. That's so good. Well, oh, it's not that we predetermined these. I'm just saying <laughs> it's a very good one. Yeah. But I've had huge uh, neck pain in my life from I would say 11 years old to 30 something years old mm -hmm. like a long time more mm -hmm. than 20 years of pain sometimes when I was in university I would wake up with so much pain I couldn't even sit down I had to lay down mm -hmm. I couldn't hold my head it's like my head was too heavy or it was awful and now uh, I worked a lot on my posture and but Pilates really helped tremendously with that and I feel that if I had known earlier but you know whatever I, I took care of it now but maybe I could have spent a little bit less time practicing and a little bit more time doing that like even just going once a week to a lesson a Pilates mm -hmm. lesson and then do a tiny bit at home or be, or even if you don't do it just gives you that sense of your posture and your body in space. Mm -hmm. And this way in everyday activities, you don't hurt yourself as much. And then it also improves your posture when you're playing your instrument mm -hmm. and how you breathe and all those things. So for me, that's a huge difference in my quality of life. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Interesting. And then the rest for everyone, like uh, sleeping and eating healthy. And yeah. 
and that that's gonna be something that we're definitely gonna talk about in a new episode about sleep that I've been doing that uh, little research on, and that's definitely gonna be very interesting for people as well. I would say for me, it would be awareness, you know, just uh, having that mind body awareness while practicing and also in life, just awareness of being in that moment, uh, being in the moment, I mean, um, has really helped a lot. So there's a lot of there's a lot of information out there. Uh, about that type of stuff and you, uh, you super mean interesting. Like mindfulness meditation. And yep, the... but also applying that to just practice, just being in the moment. So when you're practicing, you really hear what you're doing at that moment. So you're able to kind of fix it if it needs fixing or yeah. improve it when it needs to be improving. Because our mind tends to wander when we're practicing or our mind tends to wander when we're doing many different types of uh, activities. But maybe yeah. just being able to kind of be in that moment a bit more, not all the time. Because, because you, can, you can practice, you, like, when you study mindfulness a mm -hmm. little bit, you learn that you can eat mindfully, you can take a shower mindfully, sure. you can walk mindfully. Yeah. So why not practice mindfully? Mm -hmm. and and, yeah. That's a th that's a different mindset mm -hmm. than the stressed out mindset of right. I have to learn this or yeah. or I have to be always in mindfulness. No, I think mindfulness is an in and out process, and if we're doing that and being conscious of it, I think we're actually doing better than if we did the opposite. I think what you mean if I understand you correctly, is that if you're mindful, you also notice when you're not being, f when you're not uh, focused. Yes. You'll notice, oh my, but you're not judging in the nope. same way. You're like, oh, know. my mind is wondering. Yeah. Is, is go like, yeah. oh, and maybe instead of, um, yeah, mindfulness is also about not holding on to thoughts. Just yes. saying, for me, what works a lot is just saying, I don't have, time like it's not time for that right now yeah. i'll deal with you later mm -hmm. I, I talk to my thoughts like that yeah. <laughs> like i'll deal with that later and i let it go like right. like a river and the thought is in there and just goes and it's okay you know i yeah. don't need to hold on to that i really think it's a very normal process to do go in and out of things and there are degrees obviously there's obviously very intense degrees that you have to be very aware and fix those problems but i think we over over evaluate too many things instead of just being in that moment and coming in and out and be able just be aware and fixing it if we can if not those things come back we're animals right things tendencies happen again and we can fix it again we have we always get multiple opportunities to fix our problems but the more you work like that the more focus you'll be yep the more and focus the you'll develop as well the least amount of those types of thoughts you'll get as yes 100 well. because the the mind is like that the what you do the most becomes the norm. Yep. And if you if you change a habit, oh. even in your thoughts, then that mm. changes the the that changes the brain and that changes the habits. Sure. You know exactly. So at first you have to be disciplined in a way to keep the new habit. Absolutely. But then once you've done it a little bit, and instead of judging yourself, just think of it again as a process. Yes. Oh, I noticed that I was not focused. That's yeah, great. That's I great. noticed it. Yeah. Because sometimes we don't even notice yeah. it. So that's already a good yeah. uh, good thing. Yeah. But I think your your idea of talking about health is is very important. And the older I get, the more I think it's it's so important. Yep. When you're young, you think <laughs> you take it for granted yeah. that you're healthy and it you don't really need to take care of that. You need to perform and but the brain. study and <laughs> but then the brain is like <laughs> trying to you realize like it's it's very cliche but if you don't have health you can't do anything yep. so i think if you have something that's that doesn't feel right with you you should deal with that first you yeah know? totally and then everything else will be smoother e either yeah. with mental health or physical health and you know yeah. or sometimes both you know sometimes they're linked sometimes mm -hmm. stress can induce some uh, yeah some problems physically because stress yeah. is very powerful oh, yeah. it's very inflammatory and yeah. it's and that's more subjects we'll definitely be able to talk about in the future we have things lined up for that as well so yeah what well, you guys have to let us know how you guys deal with your health uh, are there things that you always have in your daily life that's proven to make you happier when you play or happier in life let us know down in the comments oh and um, uh, you want to talk about the food con because oh we yeah well, we're going to do our closing and offs, we didn't yeah. even talk about our own oh that we didn't want to feel like it was being plugged in as a little pitch we do that at the end for the yeah, hardcore people that are listening we to have us. something good to offer oh we yeah, yeah. To talk about it totally so people can know about it well like i said well, uh the flute talk podcast though is like made and produced by you guys on patreon so definitely go there first check it out 
uh, help us out every month. You can pitch in as little as $2 a month or uh, whatever amount you want, and that helps us produce that show, plus all of our other content. It leads us, hopefully, towards to making even our uh, videos ad-free on YouTube one day. <laughs> Who knows, you know? But that definitely, Patreon is definitely a place where you can also come and also talk to us and help us make better episodes or help uh, you or us help you with specific questions, just like we yeah. did today on the show. It feeds us. It feeds us, for sure. And also, we have our merch store. Uh, if you saw at the beginning of the show, store.thefluchannel.com. You can go and get gear. People have been buying mm. posters, shirts, all this stuff which is really great. We add new stuff uh, as often as we can. And then also we have the Flute Center of New York, which is a flute uh, store where you can buy flutes and they have used in new flutes. Uh, you can go to flutesforsale.com. If you talk with them or put the code TFC on their store, you can try out flutes. You can pick a couple, put them in your cart, use TFC. You can get three to four flutes to try up to 10 days. You get free shipping and an extended warranty from 12 months to 18 months. So that's really fun, and that's worldwide. Uh, and if you don't feel to do the online thing and book, you know, ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 worth of flutes, <laughs> you can definitely, you know, call them, tell us about uh, us, yeah, you, say TFC. You, you, They'll work with you on the phone too and have everything boxed up and, have, and tell you what you need to do um, to try out flutes and stuff. And uh, you can bring your flutes to your teacher or, you know, anything like that. Uh, and that really helps us out a lot as well throughout the year because we do get a small commission from any of the flutes that you decide or flute that you decide to get when you choose your flute. And also we have an online flute studio. Yep. That's really interesting. Emily teaches the flute, which is really cool. And you can email us at info at the flute channel if you want to have lessons, a one-off lesson, or if you want to have, you want to be part of the studio, email us and yeah, we'll definitely talk about it. it be one lesson or yeah. we have packages and it works very well. Yeah. With the uh, on Skype right now. Yes, yeah, Skype it works very well. Yeah, we use Skype. We use uh, we can use any type of uh, means, you know, uh, yeah. FaceTime, all those types of things, and uh, everyone's been pretty happy about it. You have people from Mexico, from the United States, people from uh, yeah, think, uh, uh, yeah. Most people are from United yeah. United States. Yeah. But uh, you, you can do it in French or in English. Yep. And it's really a lot of fun. And finally, it's FluCon. That's one of the last things is uh, that. Yeah. So I think it's going to be very interesting. Yeah. It's going to be very it's a, interesting. It's going to be a bit like uh, those festivals, you know, with courses yes. that are uh, group lessons. So people can listen in and learn a lot from others and play and uh, yeah. probably have, like, we're still in the process of uh, creating it. Yes. And, like, so and also, scheduling it, which will yeah. be very interesting. So I think if... If, uh, yeah, I, I think I would like to do a um, little warm-up session in the morning. Mm -hmm. So, of course, that part will be everyone in their studio. But that's like, the thing, right? That's the one thing we didn't mention at the very beginning. We think it's it sounds like it's a thing that everyone's there in the same room. But, in fact, no, this is the no. online convention. Yeah. So, you know, it's really great in that regard is that morning could be morning for <laughs> some people and not. But it's still like this thing that everybody comes together at that time, and have this type of thing. And, yeah. yeah, it's an online convention. So we all get together in a con it's like we all get together live in a convention room online and mm -hmm. be able to work together. And we see each other, you know, and that's what's really great. Yeah. And we can play like one person plays, the other people listen and then another person plays. Yeah. And then uh, I think I'll have probably like a little warm up and yes. then a question like a yeah. part for questions totally. about different things uh, playing in the high register blah 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 and the person can play and I give retroaction yes. that's very helpful for people to learn about different things yes. sometimes like oh yes. I have the same issue and then uh, exactly. and then probably repertoire yeah. people play pieces and we work on that and that's also interesting you can learn about different styles and uh, how to be expressive and all types of different things yeah. And also, it gets it's cheaper because you don't have to go somewhere. And you, yes. you can do it from home. And yeah, we're gonna make it very affordable. Uh, and you have to go and sign up for the newsletter. We already have, I think, about hundred people sign up for the newsletter to be the first ones to get the, the early bird and all that stuff. So you can go to flutecon.com. So F L U T E C O N. We're planning to do it in August of 2019. It'll be one day, uh, but we will try. We're gonna do one day in English and one day in French. That's and what we're trying to work towards. We'll have auditors and participants. Yep, everyone. Obviously, will participants, have a... people who want to play, will have. We won't have as many people because yes. there's a realistic amount that we can have in one day. Yeah, 
We'll start with one day. If if it's a good, if it works well, maybe we extend to more days in the future. Everyone will be able to have information about that if that comes to be. People will get definitely information about that. Um, but like right now, we're just working on the schedule, also the the logistics about it as well, how those classes are going to work. Um, we're going to be using a service that everyone can just download and use for free. Uh, and then everyone can be seen. If you have a, a webcam and everything and all those things, you will be seen inside the room altogether, and it's very seamless. And also, you'll be able to have that seminar uh, recorded. It'll be recorded live so that you'll have that for yourself to be able to go back to and, and, listen. and listen to. Automatically, we'll be able to put that out almost seamlessly right after. So that's going to be a lot of fun, too. So that's uh, FluteCon. We're going to be very proud about that. It's going to be very interesting for everyone because you don't have to travel like you said all you need is a good internet connection um a laptop or a computer yeah or your it can phone. be a good first experience and, yes or good not introduction first, but i think it's a uh, yeah it's something that uh, answers a certain need yeah yeah and, and i think yeah. it's going to be very fun to meet people yeah that in that type of way i'd like more than one day because i'd like to be able to listen to people more than once so there's you know this idea of continuity, but yeah. well, it's we've a done work festival. In yeah, we've done festivals before. We have to do it one step at a time. Yeah, we, yeah. And what's great about this is that we don't have to. It's not it doesn't have to be annual either. We can make the convention. Seasonal, if we have a new, we like have it seasonal. Every so month we're, or every yeah, something like that. So that's uh, we're trying to kind of disrupt that whole entire atmosphere. And it doesn't have to be. You have to wait a whole year to see us again. You know, if we if you really feel that you want uh, this to be part of your life. It should be available for you. So, yeah. So that's flucon.com. Go and sign up for the newsletter. Um, give us your email, and we'll be able to be in touch with you as soon as possible. We're planning on another month from now or two to give you the complete open uh, registration and schedule and on that page as well. So flucon.com, patreon.com slash the flu channel. Find us there if you want to help us produce even more, help us produce the convention better or help us produce the channel better. And we'll have more videos coming out soon. Uh, but we do this once a month, the Flute Talk podcast. So definitely uh, we'll be doing this at the last Sunday of every month. So next uh, month in March at the, the last Sunday of that month. And then I think today you have a Just Practicing. But if you're not watching this live, there's no Just Practicing for you today. So anyways, I'm Nick. And I'm Amidi. See you guys. Thanks for watching. And listening. And listening. <laughs> find us wherever you can find podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>